you get asked to think about how GPE and KE can transfer between each other. And there's some really common situations and here are some of them. So one of the simplest ones is if I drop something from a height. So if I've got a ball or any object and it's at a height and then it falls, it starts off with GPE and it's at its maximum. Now generally it will start stationary and therefore to start with the KE will equal zero because the speed equals zero and anything that's still has got no kinetic energy. Now as the object falls, that GPE is lost and it converts or it's transferred into kinetic energy. And we often write this little equation, the GPE lost equals the KE gained as it falls down. And at the bottom, now the GPE at the bottom of the fall, just before it hits the ground, is zero. Because remember, GPE equals MGH. And here, when it's at the ground, it has no height. If there's no height, it has no GPE. But all that GPE that I've lost has turned into kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, just before it hits the ground, it's going the fastest it's going to go, will equal the maximum. If we put some numbers in for this, so let's say I had GPE of 10 joules to start with. That means at the bottom, I'd have 10 joules of kinetic energy. In the middle, have a think what I'd have. Well, I'd actually have five joules of each. I'd have five joules of GPE, and I'd have five joules of kinetic energy. And hopefully you can notice something here. The sum of Ke plus GPE is equal to a constant value. I'm gonna write that here in the middle because it works for all of them, as does this equation. GPE lost equals KE gained. So here at the top, I've got that 10 plus 0 equals 10. At the bottom, 0 plus 10 equals 10. And in the middle, 5 plus 5 equals 10. So the combination is always constant. And that is because of the principle of the conservation of energy. Energy in a closed system can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred from one to the other. Slightly more complex than dropping a ball is throwing a ball up into the air and then catching it. Now, when we throw a ball up into the air, we start it off with some KE. So here, it's actually going the fastest. At the bottom, when we're throwing it, the KE is the maximum. And as it rises, it loses KE, which becomes GPE. And we can write another equation there. We can write that the KE lost equals the GPE gained. And this, once again, can be used in any situation, but this is when things are going up. So Ke lost equals GPE gained. It's the opposite of this equation here. So at the top here, all of that kinetic energy is turned into GPE. So here we've got GPE as a maximum, and the kinetic energy at the top for an instant will be zero, because when you throw a ball up in the air, it reaches the top of its throw when it just stops for a moment, and V equals zero. Now, I haven't missed out GPE at the bottom here. If we set the original level to be ground level or the zero level, then we can say that GPE equals zero. If we don't do that, we can say that the GPE equals minimum. Think about when you throw a ball up in the air yourself. The ball's actually already off the floor when you're throwing it, so it does have some GPE, um, but it has less than it will have when it moves up to the top there. Now, as it falls back down, the reverse happens. The same thing happens as here. It loses GPE and it turns into Ke. So it speeds up and at the bottom, we get the GPE is zero or the minimum and the Ke is back to being the max. It would be the same values. So these would equal each other here. And that means that whatever the speed is that you threw the ball up is the speed at which it will be when it gets to this point on its way down again. A slightly more maybe tricky problem would be a pendulum. Now a pendulum is something that just swings freely from side to side. The most common example I can think of right now is in a grandfather clock. They're pretty old fashioned but we still do sometimes see them. Now a pendulum you have to pull it up to let it start. And when you pull it up at this point here, if you look, this is the maximum height of the pendulum. Which means at this point there's the maximum GPE. And at the very start, when you're holding it ready to go, the kinetic energy equals zero because there's no velocity. Now when it swings, it gradually loses height until this point here. So at this point, it's lost GPE 
So at this point, the GPE is a minimum. Now, once again, like before, I could set this point here as zero GPE, or I could not. I just know that it's gonna be the lowest it's gonna be in this system. And therefore, the GPE that's been lost from the max to the min must have transferred to kinetic energy. And at this point, the K is the maximum. And that means the speed at this point too is at its maximum. And you might have noticed that when you see something swinging, Actually, when you're on a swing yourself, if you've been on one, that's an example of a pendulum, you go the fastest in the centre of that swing. So from here to there, you're losing GPE and you are gaining kinetic energy. Then the same thing happens in reverse as you go up. So as we go up, the GPE now goes to a maximum again because we are gaining height. And to increase that GPE, it can't come from nowhere. We can't make energy. So it comes from the kinetic energy. So at this point, the K is at a minimum, and specifically, it's zero. This pendulum stops for a moment before it then swings back, and the speed equals zero. Then the whole thing happens again, but in reverse. So we go back down to the center, where we have a maximum kinetic energy and a minimum or zero GPE, and it slows down until it reaches the height before. Now, in a perfect world, this pendulum would swing forever, um, and it would keep to the same height every time. That doesn't really happen and we'll come on to that later on about why that doesn't happen. A slightly more interesting maybe example is a roller coaster. Roller coasters work on GPE and KE um, and the interplay between them. When you're on a roller coaster you often get cranked up to the top of a big slope and then you're let down a hill and then some other things happen. So here I've drawn a loop the loop. Now in this diagram this part here at the maximum height is where we have the maximum GPE. And usually at the top of the slope, you're held there for a bit with no speed, which means you've got no kinetic energy. Then you'll have felt this as you go down the slope, you lose GPE and you've guessed it, you gain KE. So at this point here, at the very bottom of the slope, this is actually the fastest point. It's the maximum speed. So here at this point, if I do a little star, You've got no GPE because you're at ground level and your KE will be the max. Now as you then loop the loop, during this loop up to here, you slow down because you are now here going higher up so you gain GPE to this point and lose KE. Now this GPE is going to be less than here because it's not as high up if you can see along, it's about halfway and therefore you won't have the maximum GP, you'll have about half of it in this example. Also, you won't have no kinetic energy because to have no kinetic energy, you need to be this high. So here you'll have some kinetic energy, but you'll be slower than you were before. And then you'll come back down the slope, you'll lose the GPE and you'll increase the KE until you get back to the same as you were here at this point. Now, if I put some numbers into this one, let's say at the top, I've got 50 joules of GPE. It would be a lot higher than that, but just for the sake of easiness, let's go for a nice easy number. There'd be zero joules of Ke. Then at this point here, we'd have zero joules of GPE and we'd have 50 joules of kinetic energy. And let's say that this is halfway. If this was halfway up, there'd be 25 joules of each. And you can work out at any point how much GPE and Ke um, there is. So for example here, let's say that's a two thirds of the way up, there might, or about that, maybe there was GPE of 30 joules there. That would mean that here there'd be 20 joules of kinetic energy because these two numbers always have to add up to the same value, which in this circumstance is 50. Now, once again, this is a perfect world. When we add in friction, things change and we'll come back to this later and see how that is the case. Now, it's not enough to just understand what's going on there. You also have to be able to calculate things that are going on there. So I'm going to go back to a roller coaster, but I've made it slightly, slightly simpler. So I've now not got a loop the loop. So I've got a roller coaster and the roller coaster has a carriage that's 300 kilograms and it's going to follow this track. It goes down to the bottom and it goes up to a slightly higher point at C. And we're going to work out the GPE, KE at A, B and C and the velocity. Now, at a, the GPE, we can work out with the equation M, G, H. So you right for A. Let's do that in this colour. Um, so the GPE is going to equal the mass, which is 300, times G, which is always 10 on Earth, times the height, which I can see from the diagram is 50. So that's 150 
150,000 joules, quite a big number. Okay, 150,000 joules of energy at A. At the top, the velocity is going to be zero, which means the Ke, which equals one half mv squared, will also be zero. And this is important now because I now know what the total energy is going to be at any point in time. Anywhere on this track, the total energy will be 150,000 plus zero, which is 150,000 joules. And that'll be useful, especially for C. Now let's look at part B. Okay, at B, the GPE is going to equal zero because it now has no height. So the H here is zero. So that means the kinetic energy must now equal 150,000 joules because the total of the two always has to equal the same value. So if I know that, I can now work out the speed. Now remember, Ke equals one half mv squared, and I can rearrange that. So two Ke equals mv squared, two Ke divided by m equals v squared, or v equals the square root of two Ke over m. So I've kind of skipped to there. So I can put that in. So the square root of two times 150 thousand divided by the mass which is 300 from before gives me a velocity and the velocity at this point equals 31.6 meters per second so quite fast let's finally look at part c now part c is slightly harder because it's not at the top or at the bottom so at part c it's going to have both gpe and ke so at c the first thing I'm going to work out is the GPE because I know the height. So GPE equals MGH, which is equal to 300 times 10 times the height, which is 30. And if I put those numbers in together, it comes out as 90,000 joules. Now I can work out the KE from that because I know that it must equal the total energy, 150,000, minus the GPE. The Ke at this point is 60,000 joules. And just like I did here, I can say that the velocity must equal the square root of 2 Ke over m. So the square root of 2 times 60,000 divided by the mass, which is 300. And it comes out as 20 meters per second. So on this ride, you'd be still, and then you would speed up to the maximum speed of 31.6 meters per second at this point, and then you'd slow down to 20 meters per second at this point. So final question, a bit of a stretch one here before we look at friction. Um, how high does the initial slope need to be for the speed at B to be 50 meters per second? Now this is quite a clever uh, little trick I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna use the idea that the GP lost here is equal to the KE gained. So between A and B, the GP that is lost will equal the Ke that is gained by the carriage. Now this equation for GPE is mgh, and the equation for Ke is half mv squared. And you might notice something about these two equations, they both have a v in there. So I can actually cancel these v's out. So I don't actually need to know the mass, although I do, I don't need to know the mass of the coaster to work this problem out. They want to know how high the initial slope should be, so I'm going to find h on its own. So I need to take g to the side. So I can write h equals 1 half v squared divided by g. And you could also write this, by the way, as v squared over 2g. It's the same thing. So height equals 1 half times v. They want it to be 50 meters per second. Squared, don't forget to square. Divided by 2g, the 2's there, and g is 10. I'm going to put those numbers together. The height comes out as 125 meters, which is pretty tall. Okay, I'm not sure how tall most roller coasters actually are, but I don't know. Maybe that's really, really high. Now, um, everything so far has been in a very ideal world without the pesky thing called friction. We're going to think about now what adding friction into this causes. If we add friction into any of these situations, I'm going to do it in orange pen, It causes energy to be dissipated, which is basically lost as heat or wasted away. Now in this circumstance, it just means that 
the speed at the end will be less than it was if friction was there because some of the kinetic um, some of the gravitational potential energy will have become thermal energy due to friction. So if we did have 10 joules of GPE, some of that, maybe two joules, will go to the thermal energy of the surroundings. And that would mean that the kinetic energy, although it's still a maximum, would now be eight joules because eight plus two equals the initial GPE. In this circumstance, it means the ball wouldn't get as high because it wouldn't get as much kinetic energy. And then as it falls back down again, it wouldn't be at the same speed as you threw it. It would slow down. So it would be going slower here than it was going there. For a pendulum, you'll have seen this happen when you're on the swings or maybe just swung something around. You'll have noticed that over time, what will happen is that the pendulum will start to um, sway and swing. So it gets gradually less and less and less. It slows down and eventually it stops. Without friction, this would never stop. With friction, it does. And for a roller coaster, it means that speeds aren't as high as they should be. So at this point here, there would still be no GPE, but there'd be less kinetic energy. So let's think about this whole thing as a situation. At the top, you'd still have 50 joules GPE and no KE. As it went down the slope, it would lose energy due to friction. So it would go to the thermal stores of the roller coaster of the surroundings. So at this point, maybe, you'd still have 30 joules of GPE because GPE doesn't depend on friction. It depends on height, and it's at the same height. But maybe there's, let's say, 5 joules of thermal. I'm going to write it as TH, which would mean you'd now have 15 joules of kinetic energy, which would be, mean it's going slower. At this point, it would get worse. So maybe here you've only got 40 joules of kinetic energy because 10 joules have now been wasted as heat. So it would go slower than it did before. And in that case, you might find that you can't actually loop the loop because it's going too slowly. I haven't worked out if it would actually work here or not, but they do have to take that into account when they're designing roller coasters. You have to remember that friction gets in the way, so it means you can't actually loop the loop as easily as it would seem. So that is kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, transferring between the two. This is called the, cal um, the law of the conservation of mechanical energy and how friction gets in the way. Hopefully it was helpful. Thank you.